they've all, they've all been briefed, so I think we're perfectly good. All right, sounds good. So, Coach, if you would go ahead and give us a little brief uh, uh, recap of your thoughts of the game. Well, congratulations to Kirby Smart and the uh, University of Georgia on um, being the SEC champs. Uh, they were the better football team today. Um, proud of my team. Um, proud of the fight that they um, they gave today. Uh, we were just a little short. Um, some key plays, obviously, in the game um, were, you know, pivotal. Obviously, the special teams play early, um, inability to get off the field on third down, uh, fourth down, a couple of uh, opportunities that we had to, you know, convert. Um, so in, in its totality, I mean, you're talking about five or six plays where, you know, look, coulda, woulda, shoulda, right? The best team won today. Um, but uh, I love the way our guys competed. They fought, um, and, and that's who they are. That's the identity of this team all year. Uh, and unfortunately, we were not clean enough in some of those areas uh, against uh, the number one team in the country. And when you're playing the best team in the country for an SEC championship, those things are going to come back and affect the outcome. Um, but as I told them in the locker room, um, We've got a great foundation. Um, it's a young football team uh, that will take uh, this lesson and um, build off of it. And I'm um, so excited to have the opportunity to coach them. Questions uh, for Coach Kelly or the players at this time? And if you would, please identify yourself and your affiliation. If you'll raise your hand, we'll get a, phone, get a microphone to you. Uh, Jacques Doucet, WAP TV in Baton Rouge. Coach, on the block field goal early, do you feel like your guys weren't coached on that? They got confused. What do you think happened on? Obviously, uh, we did a poor job coaching. Um, you know, it's our responsibility to have our guys alert in that situation. Um, they were not alert, and, and that falls on coaching, and that falls on my shoulders, and um, I take full responsibility for that. Questions right here? Thanks. Michael Cobble, WBRZ TV in Baton Rouge. Just for the two players, Makai, you could start. Um, just the fight that you guys showed in this game, obviously getting down early, the situation with the quarterback going out, Garrett stepping in, just the ability to, to fight through that to kind of show who you guys have been for most of this season. What are you going to take away from this game, despite it not going the way you wanted it to? Um, I would say I'm just glad the team fought. You know, that's what we've done all year. You know, we've had multiple comebacks. and. Just different things. You know, I'm proud of the team. You know, I'm happy to go to war with these guys any day. And I would say we just fell back on our traits, you know, who we were. And we're a team that fight. <clears throat> um, I would say, you know, it doesn't, how we looked at it, it didn't matter what quarterback came in, you know. It was just plays to be made on the field. And I feel like Gary gave us, you know, opportunities to make plays down the field. And we did it in the second half. So I was... Very, you know, proud of the offense that we didn't give up. We just, you know, kept striving and just kept putting plays together. Questions? Raise your hand. Right over there. Uh, Wilson Alexander from the Advocate. Brian, uh, over here. Jaden, was he limited coming into the game, or did something happen within the game that made his uh, ankle injury seem to maybe get more aggravated and end up having to take him out at halftime? No, I thought he started off really well. I mean, he was throwing the ball accurate. You know, the early drive, obviously. Um, you know, he looked good, poised in the pocket. And then um, it was second quarter when he stepped up in the pocket, he got rolled up on. And just it was a re-injury, re-injured the ankle that had been injured. Um, but no, I, I think he he felt good, looked good. Our assessment was that he, um, he was moving the team in the manner that we wanted him to. Um, and it was just a matter of getting rolled up again. Questions? How about back there? Yeah, um, uh, Matthew Bruni with On3. Uh, Makai, just what was it like going against that Georgia offensive line and that run game and just how they kind of attacked y'all? I mean, you know, it's a challenge every single week, you know, playing in the SEC, going against good old lines, and just, you know, we've played a great running back almost every week. So, you know, it, it was just another bump in the road for us, just, you know, the same preparation throughout the week. Just, you know, we got to fall back on our traits and do what we do, and, you know, everything will fall in line. Back in the front. <coughs> oh. 
Uh, Coach, you're an analytical guy. You studied those analytics. Were you surprised they went for two to make it 50 in the fourth? Um, not really. You know, I don't get too caught up in what other teams are doing. It's not my job, you know, to really – it's my job to stop them, <laughs> not to figure out whether they should go for two or not. So, um, no, I, I really didn't give it much thought. Right there. Brian, you talked about not being, not playing clean today, but was this also kind of an illustration of how far this team needs to evolve and kind of go? Do you see them being at a, at a different level where you guys need to be? Uh, not really. I mean, I, look, I mean, I, I'm not going to sit here and say woulda, coulda, shoulda, like I said in my open comments. But if we're just – if we just do a little bit better job on a, on a field goal – situation you know take seven off the board it's 43 points and you know maybe we convert that it's it's 37 um you know you, you got a, a one score game you know what i mean and and so now you got a one score game going into the fourth quarter we get stopped on fourth and inches that's a pretty close game so the the divide is not huge um but we got work to do as I told our guys, you know, and it's it's 24-7. It's not just on the field. It's it's how we do things aw away from the building. It's it's every day in the classroom, in the community, all the little things that are going to allow us to be more aware and to be better communicators and have an attention to detail in all those areas. Um, we got to continue to develop our football team, but this – foundation is is really strong and uh, we'll be able to um, uh, continue to build on it um, but I don't believe that the gap is um, something that we can't uh, continue to close and um, get back here again next year that'll be our goal to get back here and to win it more questions Yeah, uh, Malik, you kind of mentioned it, but the pass game um, with both quarterbacks was, was working. What specifically uh, were you all doing well um, in this game that allowed you all to get, uh, get open? Um, you know, it was just, you know, our guys just playing, you know, being better than other people, you know, just pushing the ball down the field, creating matchups with speed guys, with other guys in the corner pack position. But, you know, I feel like Gary just gave us, you know, opportunities down the field, you know, just trusting us to make plays. And, you know, we came out and made those plays. Right there. Yeah, Brian, just about Garrett's play today, some good and some bad. Uh, yeah, I mean, he did some really good things. He's called upon to come in and be aggressive, which he was. And, you know, for a guy that, that's coming in off, you know, not playing a lot of football, um, really pleased it, it, look there's a learning experience out there there's some throws that you know obviously that he'd like to have back but look he's got he's got a quarterback mentality that he wants to be aggressive as Malik said you know he's pushing the ball down the field and giving these guys a chance to make some plays down the field and they did uh, sometimes they're you know they're plays where they're 50 50 balls but um, you know he he gives them a chance to make some plays, and uh, he did he did a nice job with that. Questions, right there. Yeah, hey coach, uh, Glenn West, go two four seven. Um, just the next couple weeks, I know obviously you guys are focused on recruiting, but just internally with this team, what are the accomplished? What are the goals that you guys have? I guess over the next couple weeks to, you know, before the well, they got the exams. Game. They got to take care of their academics. Um, so first and foremost, academics. Uh, we'll give them a chance to rest up a little bit, uh, get them in uh, the training room, uh, some weight training. Uh, we have our end of the year banquet where we're going to celebrate our seniors uh, on Sunday uh, and um, thank them for what they've contributed to an SEC West championship. Um, and, and we'll do exit, you know, um, meetings with our players. Um, you know what they've done you know, well, you know, what we can do better uh, as, as we look towards, you know, another game as well. Um, we'll practice next week. Um, and, um, you know, again, there, there are other things that, that are as, as important as recruiting, and that is your team. Uh, and, you know, we're not going to rush off and forget about, 
you know, our players and the development of our players uh, at this very crucial time as well. Just a few more questions back there. For either uh, Makai or Malik, uh, Jaden playing through that in the second quarter, um, particularly maybe the last drive when he came in and he was clearly very limited to lead you all to a field goal. What did that tell you about him? Um, I feel like that tells me that he's passionate about playing the game of football for this team. You know, he's a fighter. You know, he came in here, you know, with a bump on his, you know, his ankle, but he just never backed down through practice or anything. He just kept fighting. To say that he fought through three quarters of, of play against the number one team, you know, on a bump ankle, it shows that he's pretty a strong player. Here in the front. Guys, for the two players, I'd like both of you to answer it. Not necessarily personally for yourself, but speak for the team. The idea of looking forward towards a bowl game. Clearly, the, the end of the season didn't finish the way you wanted it to, but you still have one game left to prepare for, a chance for a 10-win season. What are your thoughts, I guess, as far as that goes? Um, I would say we just want to finish off the right way, you know, get back to it, get back to our process, you know, going at it in the weight room, working hard, you know, just practicing, paying attention to the small details, you know, just end the season on a good note and, you know, send the seniors out right. Um, like Coach Kelly told us, you know, when we just talk, you know, and out on the – you know, a winning season, going out, you know, a three-game losing streak. That's all I would say. Last question right here. Uh, Coach, Shea Dixon with on three. Um, I think before that A&M game, you had won every November game for like five seasons straight. That's correct. What is, uh, <laughs> what's the approach here across the next month, the off season, to not let the final two games here take anything away from what you all accomplished? Well, I don't think there's, you know, anything that can take away from uh, what this team accomplished on the field relative to winning an SEC West championship. They won that on the field. Um, I, what I think it does is it, it, it brings into light clearly the progress that we've made um, and the things that we have to continue to work on. So I think it just – I think for everybody um, – it, it clearly defines who we want to be and that we're not there yet. Um, and that's okay, you know, that's okay. Um, we're not happy that we're not the SEC champs. That's not what we wanted today. We wanted to win this game, but we know where we're at. And, and we've clearly talked about what we need to do to be the SEC champs. And uh, that's okay, we need to go to work and um, get better at the things necessary for us to be um, better collectively, individually, and uh, as a football program. All right, Coach and guys, thank you very much. Appreciate your time. Again, I think there's some players that are still available outside of LSU's locker room.